Hey guys, and welcome to Top Channel 111, and today we're going to be looking at certain ways to render more detail in Blender. We all love detail shots, but most of the time, more detail means more render time or a lagging viewport. Here are some tricks to use if you want to add more detail to your renders. Number one, cube maps. In computer graphics, cube mapping is a method of environment mapping that uses the six faces of a cube to map an environment background. This is how most HDRI mapping works, but the problem with HDRIs, you don't get as much control as you need. Rotating the HDRIs is tricky and they do not capture shadows or have a ground for your characters to stand on. You can project cube map textures on a sphere and edit it for more interesting visuals. If you want cube maps, there is an AI for generating them via text prompts called skybox it also has a new feature where you can draw the details in or you can just get the add-on hdri maker to get the same level of control number two parallax mapping parallax mapping or virtual displacement mapping is an enhancement of the bump mapping or normal mapping techniques applied to textures in 3d rendering applications and video games to the end user this means that textures such as stone walls will have more apparent depth and thus greater realism with less impact on render time. At steeper view angles, the texture coordinates are displaced more, giving the illusion of depth due to the parallax effect as the view changes. Blender does not support parallax mapping by default, but add-ons like WParallax have support for parallax mapping. There are also material libraries that come with parallax materials, so you don't have to worry about how it's going to work in Blender. The add-on will handle that for you. Number three, alpha maps. I think alpha maps are the most underrated ways to adding details in renders. Take an example of the artist Kai Wan Shaban. He uses character silhouettes in his renders to add visual interest. These are non 3D characters, just a simple alpha texture or silhouette on a plane. If you want to try them in your scenes, you can download them on Blender Market. Links are in the description. Number four, light gobos. Another way to use alpha maps is using light gobos. Where there is light, there is shadow. Adding shadows of large objects in your scenes adds definition and depth to your renders. You can add light objects in your scenes and hope they will cast the shadows where you want them or simply use light gobos. The texture, when added to the spotlight, will be projected onto objects as the shadow, which gives more defined shadows without needing actual objects to cast real shadows. Light gobos are not simply black and white silhouettes of objects like trees and leaves. These are depth maps of objects. That is why if you look at shadows created by, by good gobos like the ones provided by the gobos light texture add-on, you see that shadows in some areas are out of focus than others. This is the definition I'm talking about. They also include animated ones and caustics. Number five, alpha textures. Like I said, alpha maps are an underrated way of adding details to your renders. You can also use them to create massive forests like in the example of alpha trees which is a blender add-on that uses this technique to create millions of trees without slowing down the viewport or your render. It's just a texture on a plane that is oriented towards the camera most of the time. The add-on also handles optimization as having this many alpha textures can also be demanding on your PC. This add-on works with trees and vegetation, but this can also be used for a crowd or grass and more. Number six, height displacement maps. A height map is one way to get detail on a mesh without adding it manually. Height maps can be an image, a video or procedure textures. It's a way to displace geometry on a mesh by using the luminance of a texture. Pure white pixels will raise the vertices at that pixel by one unit and pure black will raise the vertices at that pixel by negative one and pure gray will do nothing. You can use height maps to add mountains, sculptures and more. A quick google search can avail hundreds of height maps to you. Though they might not be high resolution, most of the time you don't need it anyway unless you're doing close-ups. For that, I would recommend add-ons like True Terrain. It uses similar techniques coupled with others to achieve more detailed environments. 
number seven, we have vector displacements like height maps. Vector maps displace geometry according to the color of the pixel at a vertex, but unlike height maps that do it in only up and down directions, vector displacement maps do it in all directions. Now the difference between height maps and vector displacement maps is that vector maps can create geometry that falls over itself, something you can't do with height maps. In Blender, vector displacement can be created procedurally in the shader editor or used as a brush in sculpting via VDMs. If you want some amazing examples of shader-based vector displacement projects, check out this bundle from Node November, where artists during the month of November challenge themselves to make the most amazing objects using only nodes. Oh. Number 8. Normal Maps In 3D computer graphics, normal mapping or DOT3 bump mapping is a texture mapping technique used for faking the lighting of bumps and dents, an implementation of bump mapping. It is used to add details without using more polygons. This technique is the most popular technique of adding detail at no extra computation cost. Details added using normal maps do not require extra subdivisions on a mesh like height maps and vector displacement maps. For displacement maps, the level of details is directly linked to the number of subdivisions on a mesh which increases the render time of each frame. Never underestimate the power of a good roughness map. Roughness is used to determine how rough or shiny a surface is. Most shader nodes in Blender come with a roughness input. You can use the slider to input a single value or you can plug in a texture to drive the roughness of the surface. A good roughness map can turn a boring render into one that everyone is obsessed with. If you want good roughness maps, you can search for grunge maps on Google and a few will pop up but make sure you get high resolution maps or the roughness will look weird. Number 10. Proxies and Imposters Sometimes rendering a lot of detail is not so much a problem like working with lots of detail. For example, if you're rendering trees, the process of rendering them might be faster than working with them in the viewport. Since at any given point, the viewport has to compute each tree in your scene. And for a forest that has tens of thousands of trees, all these trees have to be accounted for when working in the viewport. But at render time, the computer only cares about what the camera sees, which makes computations faster. To make it easier to work while in the viewport, proxies are used in place of trees. This can be a simple plane or cubes or imposters like ones generated by the instant imposter add-on. This add-on generates a low poly version of the tree, which looks identical to the original one and can be used as proxy in the viewport or as the final version since it retains most of the detail from the original tree. Number 11. Decals. Decals are details plastered on an object. Decals are usually not part of the main object but are rendered as though they are. Decals could be geometry detail like what the add-on deco machine offers. The decals itself is a texture on a plane rendered to look as actual geometry part of the main object. The decal machine add-on does a great job at this and their decals come with parallax shading supported which makes the decals look fused to the object. There are also texture decals like what my add-on quick decals provides. These are details for adding quick texture effects like water damage, posters and more. This is a great way to add detail without UV unwrapping or spending a lot of time in Photoshop. Number 12. Texture painting. Sometimes especially for stylized renders, a great way to add detail is not to model it, but paint it in. This technique is great for optimization or simply achieving a style that is hard to get with polygon modeling or does not look right if not painted. If you do texture painting and sculpting a lot, you may also want to try out the sculpt paint wheel add-on that adds all your sculpting and painting brushes in a pop-up wheel for easy use. Number 13, render optimization. While proxies are great for, for viewport optimization, there are other ways you can optimize your project for less render time. Both Cycles and EV have options to set a texture size limit at render time since light textures contribute a lot to longer render times. So setting a texture size limit helps especially since most of the time you don't need to use 2K or 4K textures for every model in your scene. But if the limit is, is not set, the entire size of the texture will be used slowing down the render. The only issue with this technique is that it limits the texture size for all the objects in your scene, yet sometimes you want objects, especially those close to the camera, to have more resolution. 
if you want more control over scene optimization, there is an add-on for that called MemSave by Polygonic. This add-on will dynamically change the texture size of the objects as the camera moves closer to them, giving them a smooth transition from low texture size to a high texture size. Those were some of the ways you can add detail to your renders without adding too much stress on your machine. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All links are in the description.